Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, both here on Earth and out in space. We've also got a bit of activity this morning on the sun, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star with brightness left and right on the south. One active region departs as another enters. There are some filament destabilizations we'll see a bit better momentarily, but first, folks, when we said to expect the coronal hole stream to be weak, we gave it a fighting chance to do a little more than this. It has been a very slow rise to only moderate intensity. Earth's field is handling it like you slap the snooze button on your alarm clock. But you will notice some filaments ripping away as small CMEs as we come to 304 angstroms, and then at the end of the sequence, the big filament central on the south begins destabilizing. This will be one of the primary things I watch develop today as I just like to make sure it releases southward or collapses back to the chromosphere rather than erupt on a more equatorial trajectory. Let's head right out for some visuals. First is the Gaia 3 early release bonanza of stellar motion predicted over the next 400,000 years. No stars in the sky sit in the same visual spot from our perspective, and here is the expected change. Up next, some of the points of light we can't see. If you look at the declination and right ascension, you can see this is not an all-sky image like the last one tracking stellar motion. This is 25,000 radio sources in a tiny, tiny sliver of the sky. Up next, we're going out to what they call a dwarf nova. It's a micronova class event that they think happens in the disk around a star, even though they've never actually seen that happen. It's just a guess. And like all other nova in the sub-super class, it isn't limited to just one outburst. Here, they are studying the Poe's zenith behavior of a 2019 outburst at V386 Serpentis, and after that major eruption, there has been a patterned pulsation as it recovers from it. Let's head out to another site in space, sticking with our galaxy, and confirm now to not be a supernova remnant. This gorgeous propeller-like nebula has a helical twist, bringing back veteran observers to the mountain of odd electrically sculpted forms in space. It's definitely the prettiest thing we've got to see today. But let's go from the pretty to the serious now with Dr. Roy Spencer, world-class climatologist, former NASA scientist, and only not a household name worldwide because he refuses to bend the honesty of his science to climate propaganda. Let's get an early look at the April global temperatures before the officials get their act together. For the second month in a row, the global temperature was below average. Primary driver right now is the La Nina, basically just repeated April 1980 last month. An interesting note up next that requires a reminder that plasmas can deconstruct plastic, radioactive waste, and, let's add on that today, it cleans the atmosphere as well. If you are new to the channel, you may not know that the world obliterated lightning records last year, especially in the Arctic, but also in terms of upward superbolts from the Earth. As the magnetic field of our planet continues to weaken, the lightning will increase and will phenomenally surge in the crescendo of the event. Many of the things poisoning our world now might not hang around this planet nearly as long as those experts are thinking. We greatly appreciate your support. If you missed it yesterday, for those hoping to get one of the six remaining permanent spots at Observer Ranch, visitation day is May 21st. Hop on that verification horse fast at ObserverRanch.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.